Praise the Lord, church. Shall we stand up, close our eyes, and uh, we'll look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time you've given us, O oh God. Thank you for this beautiful afternoon, Lord God. You've brought us all together to praise you, to lift your name, to glorify your name, O oh God. To thank you for who you are. Lord, O oh God, you've been a wonderful God to us, O oh God. Thank you for leading us through this week, O oh God. And Lord God, we surrender ourselves just as we are. We have come and we are offering ourselves into your hands, O oh God. We pray that you will bless our lives. Make it meaningful. Make, making it a blessing for everyone, O oh God. Father, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit, anoint us, touch our lives, O oh God, every area of our life, O oh God. And we pray, O oh God, that you will mend our hearts, bless our hearts, heal our bodies, Lord, and our minds. Lord, O oh God, we pray that you will bless our way, O oh God. Holy Spirit, overshadow us, O oh God. Take us through this week. We surrender ourselves into your hands. Lead us through into deliverance and victory, O oh God. We surrender ourselves as we worship you, as we praise you. Take all the glory, O oh God, and we pray, may your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God is a great God. Amen. Amen. He's our risen Savior. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The grave could not hold him back. He rose up from the grave. He's a glorious God. Victorious and strong No one else above him None is strong to say He alone has conquered The power of the grave Gloria
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What a glorious God we serve. And he said that he is the friend that we can trust on. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody beside you. Tell them, I am a friend of God. Come on. Come on, let's praise him. Put your hands together, church. Come on. Through that 
somebody make a joyful noise in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. He's a faithful friend that you and I could ever have. He's all that you and I need. A friend that stays closer than a brother. He's a friend that is willing to give his very life for us. He's a friend that said, I will walk with you through the fire. He's a friend that said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And this morning we're going to worship him and tell him because he's the God that lifts us up from the ashes. He's the God that raises up. He keeps our head high even though we're walking through fire. Amen. He lifts our lives out of ruins. And we worship you, Jesus Christ.
worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you. Come on, church. Come on, all over this place. Live the name of Jesus. Tell, tell to the ruins. Speak to your ruins. Let it come to life. This morning, every ruins come to life in the beauty, in the beauty of the light of God's glory, Jesus. We live today. We live today. We worship you, Jesus, on it. We worship you, God. Our eyes are fixed on you, God. Our eyes are fixed on you, Jesus. Our eyes are fixed on you, God. Our eyes are fixed on you, Jesus. Let the ruins, let the ruins come. Rising up from the ashes, but forever you reign. And so we'll find refuge in the shadow of your wings. I love you forever, and forever I'll sing. Oh, I will sing. I will sing of your glory. And I will sing of your mercy, Lord. And I will tell of all your wonders. Oh, Jesus, washed in your blood, saved and secure, rescued and forgiven. I am a child of God, walking in your grace, living in your beauty, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, we love you, we love you, God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. 
but songs of deliverance. We've been liberated from our bondage. Come on, church. We're the sons and the daughters. So let us sing. sing a church I'm no longer thank you Jesus for this privilege you've given us to be called as your children washed and redeemed bought in your precious blood walking in your glory Bless the rest of the service, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Put your hands together. Welcome, Pastor Deepak, for the announcements. Hallelujah, church. We had a wonderful time of worship. Let's put our hands together once again. Thank the Lord for this beautiful Sunday morning. It was pretty cold today morning, but our hearts are warm by God's presence. Amen. As we have been doing this year, we are going to read a psalm together responsively. So if you would like to just stand, we would stand together and we would, re we would read Psalms 118. Verse 1 I will read, verse 2 you all join together, verse 3 I will read and like that we will go until the end. And the last verse we will all read together. So shall we begin Psalms 118. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good because his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let 
I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. They compassed me about, yea, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. God is the Lord, which hath shewed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Let's all read the last verse together. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Shall we close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this beautiful Sunday morning that you have given to us to come together and worship as a family. Lord, we are so blessed to be in your presence, O oh God, Lord. Thank you for those encouraging words from this psalm, O oh God, Lord. Your word says it is better to trust in you than to put a trust in man, O oh God, Lord. Thank you for you are a strength, you are a shield. Whenever we called on to you in distress, you answered up, answered our prayers, O oh God, Lord. Thank you once again for being with us, Lord, every moment of our life. This day, Lord, once again, we commit ourselves into your hand, and especially those who have walked in to our church for the very first time. Lord, we pray for each one of them. God, we pray you will bless them. You will touch their lives. And Lord, you will transform their lives, O oh God, Father, Lord. God, we pray for everybody here who is celebrating, O oh Lord, their birthdays, their anniversaries, O oh Lord, this week. We pray that, Lord, you will bless them this week, O oh Lord, that they will begin a new chapter, a new season in your presence, O oh God, Father, and you will bless them this year, Lord. Father, we pray for anybody who is traveling, Lord, this week. God, we pray for your journey mercies to be upon their life. Lord, finally, we pray for the offerings, Lord, that your children have put in your presence. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will bless it, O God, Father, Lord. And thank you once again for you are a faithful God and you will multiply it, Lord, your blessings into their own lives, O God, Father. Lord, we remember every, anybody who has not been able to stretch forth their hands today. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will bless them, O God, Father, that they will have abundance, O God, Father, Lord, that every financial challenges, O God, Lord, every financial bondages shall be broken in the name of Jesus and your victory be upon their life, O God. Thank you once again for your presence today with us. God, our hearts are ready. Lord, speak to us through your word, O oh God, Father, Lord, and thank you, Father, for every time we hear your word, Lord, you change our lives, O oh God, Father, Lord, we, we are ready to hear you and ready to work upon it, O oh God, Father. Thank you once again for this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Church, let's put hands together and welcome our dear pastor, even as we stand, remain standing for our confessions. Thank you, Pastor Deepak. Let's do the confessions together. <clears throat> I believe in the Almighty God, I have a I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of God. He suffered, died, and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall serve God. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who is worshipped in heaven. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving, and service to God and His church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says. I have what it says I have. 
And I can do what it says I can do. Today as I love the Lord God. Here in my spiritual family. I am blessed, healed and anointed. For a holy and victorious I will never again be the same. In Jesus name. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. You sound so beautiful today. Wow. This morning, 6 o'clock, 6.30, I was shocked. The weatherman was saying it's 13 degrees. 13 degrees? Bangalore? It's getting cold. Last Sunday we were looking at the Bible uh, from the perspective of having the mind of God. Having the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord. And today we want to look uh, uh, from God's word on developing habits that are pleasing to God. Habits really are what makes and breaks and builds or destroys. Because habits become automatic. Habits uh, are basically practices where the we did it ignorantly or we did it intentionally. But then they become habits. Now when something becomes a habit, then it's no longer intentional. It is just the way we are programmed. And as I was looking at the Bible uh, and trying to understand how God gives importance to this, I was shocked. A lot of times we think, you know, getting baptized is a commandment. Uh, participating in the Holy Communion is important doctrine of the Bible. Giving uh, financially to God, you know, one-tenth of our income <coughs> as tithes and additionally offerings. Uh, we think all those are commandments. Yes, they are and we must follow that. But I was quite surprised to find that there is so much, um, so much passionate, direct commandments about developing good habits as a child of God, which is so strong in the Bible. The uh, we want to look at some of those today. Let's start with 1 Corinthians. The Bible is saying in chapter 6 verse 12, Everything is permissible, allowable and lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. Not all things are good for me to do, expedient and profitable when considered with other things. Everything is lawful for me, but I will not become the slave of anything or be brought under its... So in other words, Apostle Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, is telling us, don't allow unnecessary habits to become addictions. Don't allow unnecessary, unprofitable practices to become habits in life because then they go on the autopilot mode and they start leading our lives. That is precisely what the Bible is saying. Now, I was just looking at the power of habits and looking at uh, uh, what are good habits and bad habits. Now, from the Bible, there's a lot. And I tell you, uh, so much from the scripture, and we'll come to that. Uh, we'll, we won't be able to deal with the whole thing, but a little bit will. But initially, I thought, we'll look at what some survey says. Now, this is Reader's Digest International Survey about some bad habits. <laughs> Shall we look at it? Some bad habits. Top seven bad habits. One is snacking, eating, even when you are not hungry. <laughs> International bad habits. Watching TV, wasting time. Overspending, buying unnecessary things. Excessive fast food eating. Regrettable behavior, which means do something and then regret about it. <clears throat> Say something, touch something, eat something, speak to someone. Ha, go somewhere and then say, oh no, shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't have. Regrettable behavior. It's in the top seven bad habits internationally. Skipping breakfast. <laughs> bad habit. <laughs> Sunday morning you can call it fasting, but what about other days? <laughs> <laughs> Cracking joints, 
biting nails, avoiding eye contact while talking, playing with hair while talking, are all list of bad habits. I have written the eighth one as complimentary only for India. Bad habit, always in a hurry, never on time. <laughs> Especially after parking the car, what a hurry to come into the church. Okay, list of good things. Are you all with me? Yes. List of good things. Good habits. Reader's Digest International Survey. Hmm. Good habit number one. Eating dinner minimum three hours before sleep, which helps to reduce sugar and stay fit. <laughs> habit number two. Good habit. Daily fast walks for a minimum of 30 minutes. Pastor, it's cold. No. Number three, planning in advance on what conversations to have, purchases to make, and recreations to enjoy. Number four, getting good sleep for a minimum of six to seven hours every day, preferably in the night. Good habit. Number five, managing reading materials, time, space, and money productively. International good habits. Managing reading materials, time, space, and money productively. Number six, finishing things on schedule, working out of rest, not stress, and living in savings, not debts. Number seven, the last one. It's called spiritual disciplines in Reader's Digest, but I kind of paraphrased it for ourselves. Discipline of spiritual qualities, which includes daily time of prayer and devotion, studying of the Bible, and worshipping God. List of good habits. Now, good habits and bad habits are all part of the brain structure. Now, I'm not going to get into all of those neuropsychosis, psychological, uh, physiological understanding of the basal ganglia and how the front lobe and the middle part of the brain interact and pick up memories and make it a circuit. And No, we'll not get into all of that. We'll just look at how the Bible talks about God wants our habits to become productive because Christ-like nature requires taking control over daily habits of life. Our brain tries to become lazy. Actually, it's not lazy. Our brain is made in such a way, God created it in such a way that it looks for shortcuts. It looks at how to do things over a period of time without burning too much energy. That's really the truth. And the problem is that the brain cannot tell you the difference between what is a bad habit and a good habit. As far as the brain is concerned, it just makes your natural tendencies a habit. Now, Duke University research in 2006 found that more than 40% of daily activities of our life are not even intentional because they are just habits that we follow. 40%, close to half of our lifestyle is not intentional, is a result of our habit. Wow. We better watch out at our habits because they have so much effect on us and, and I'm going to show you from the Bible how God wants us to be careful of our habits including the habit of not saying Amen when you have to is a habit that you can change mm. when a habit really emerges what happens is the brain stops fully participating in a decision making it stops working so hard and it starts diverting focus on other things. So, unless we deliberately fight a habit, unless we make new routines in the mind, the pattern of habits will unfold automatically. I'm going to give you a simple example on understanding this, how habits form. Um, when you first learned how to drive a car, okay. when you learned how to drive a bike, 
when you learned how to uh, ride a bicycle no takers for any of these things bicycle oh okay now first time you got onto a bicycle if you remember boy you got the bicycle or girl you got the bicycle and you looked at it and you saw its pedals and its handle and the bell and the brake and, and you looked at the road and you looked at the tires and then someone told you and then you, you held it straight and you tried to push it and then you remembered, oh, I have to take out the stand and you, you took out the stand and tried to balance the cycle and then somebody had to hold you while you carefully put one leg on top of the cycle and crossed over and sat on the seat and, and then and then and then you're balancing and then you're hoping someone would push and trying to how to put one leg on the pedal and how how to get the balance and after a little while by the time you see the turn there far away here itself you're ready to turn <laughs> am I connecting with somebody's memory right so we learned cycling like that, didn't we? And then we finally came back to the house and kept the cycle in one place and then we felt, no, we should move it a little further, kept it there. No, kept it in another place and then cleaned it again and then kept it in another place and cleaned it one more time and cycling experience. Three weeks down the line, You're so used to cycling now, hmm? you're not at all focused. First day when you took it, even if someone spoke to you, you couldn't hear what they were saying because you're totally focused on the cycle. Now, two, three weeks into cycling, you become an expert. Huh? With one hand, you're holding the cycle and you're talking to your mom, milk and waters, and with the other leg, you kick the stand. You didn't even, <laughs> you didn't even notice. Hey, come on. Am I making sense to anybody? and then just pushed into the thing and then and, and of course you had automatically put the key in the keyhole, opened the uh, bike and, and, and just jumped on it and went and in the meanwhile you are thinking what else to buy and you're, you're not even conscious that you're pedaling or you're avoiding stones, you're avoiding you know uh, uh, potholes on the road, you're not conscious at all, you're, th you're saying hi to another friend and you know you saw someone in the front and without knowledge you rang the bell and it's, it's just called habit. It becomes a habit. What happens is the whole brain is now not working. Brain has found a shortcut to collect memories and put it into action without using other parts of the brain. That's why now the brain is so free on the way you remember, oh no, I forgot to take the purse. First day when you took the cycle, there is no space in the brain to think what you took, what you're wearing, nothing. But after three months, while you're cycling, you're thinking about what are the works to finish, what are the things to carry, why? Because the brain has found a short circuit on controlling this habit called cycling and you don't take any effort. That's called a habit where the whole mind is not involved. It becomes, a, a, whether it's proactivity or reactivity, it is an activity which is taken over by habits. And many of us are living in the consequences, whether it is good or bad, of the habits we have developed. One of the habits I've developed is smiling when I see people. It just comes naturally. There are times people have told me, Pastor, we came to actually complain, but after seeing you, we thought it's okay. <laughs> smiling has become very, very natural for me. It's something that I've developed. Even in funerals these days, I smile and trying to change that part I want to get a poker face and and be relevant to the situation but smiling has become a part of me another thing I've consciously developed is never speak about anybody when I'm preaching if there's if there's something someone told me about them when I'm preaching I'm very careful not to touch anything that I know about anybody especially if it's critical now, if it's a positive story yes but it's a critical story and if that person is there, then I just don't want to talk about it. I've developed this habit, always be positive with people, always bless people. Another thing I've developed over a period of time is no matter what, when they criticize, don't respond. 
just don't respond no oh, what are you doing with your life what you were preaching chair don't respond next time you meet them just meet them as if they didn't send that message just hello how are you doing and guess what even they would have forgotten about it and then they will repent and then they'll come and say sorry you just behave like i don't even remember somebody sent me a message uh, was it ronaldo and messi had a fight footballers footballers ronaldo and messi and ronaldo said i am a gift sent by god to teach the world football so they wanted to know what messi feels messi says i don't remember sending him <laughs> habits any ronaldo supporters i don't know if this is true <laughs> probably a joke that came in the paper or what's up but the point i'm making is habits basically define how we pro act or react either how we foresee situations or how we react to situations that have already happened but habits are important to cultivate because once we cultivate positive habits then you don't have to worry because the brain takes care of keeping it in motion and if you cultivate negative habits the tragedy is you have to take extra efforts to ensure that you stop it in the process and build better habits because brain is constantly looking for methods to use lesser energy in daily living that's why hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 is so important but solid food hold on this is not biryani this is not that oil fried special butter naan no this is word of god god's word this is not restaurant this is god's word solid food of god's word is for full grown hold on so full grown after 30s after 40s no not physical age but those who have grown by use of senses and mental faculties trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good noble and what is evil and contrary either to let's read that line together divine or human law so habits are something that you practice not just what you think habits are something that, next sunday i'm going to preach about the the importance of having the right thoughts okay oh you will enjoy next sunday's message but we'll stick to this today are you all enjoying god's word sure okay because i've got another message also if you want i can change it's so important to have both habits of divine law and social law that's what we read in hebrews chapter 5 you need to have both the habits spiritual habits and social habits habits why is it important because spiritual habits give you a response from god and social habits give you a response from people now a lot of times people have very good spiritual habits because we are god's children we study god's word but because we have poor social habits the blessings god gives us we're not able to enjoy in our social life mm -hmm. it's time to get your promotion god has given it to you but because you just can't have social uh, proper good habits with your boss or with your colleagues they are just not able to give you a green they're just not able to give you success so god says not only divine law but even social law we should develop good habits <laughs> parents always be loving to your children you don't know what cattle they are pastor okay fine but but be loving to them children always be honorable to your parents don't just look at them and feel like oh goliath came home no <laughs> just have a smile when you see them hey married people husbands when you see your wife just get a smile don't walk by as if you saw some you know <laughs> no don't do that lay 
lady, when you see your husband, have a smile on your face. Don't look at him like you are. No, don't do that. I'm preaching good today, am I? Young people, when you meet your colleagues, you meet your classmate, have a respectful, honorable approach. Develop positive habits. These are important by the word of God. These are important by the Holy Bible. It is important. And, and all of these habits are actually built on our value systems. Our value systems about what we value. And, and don't build values on assumptions. Build values from the Holy Bible. Open the Bible and read and understand what God values and what your ethics should be. And get your values from there. Not just assuming, oh, this may be right, this may be wrong. Don't go by assumptions. And I'll tell you why values are important for habits. Let me explain this. If you have unclear values, you live in confusion with uncertainty. If you have false values, you will live in deception and be feeling cheated constantly. If you have constantly conflicting values, it will create tension in your life and you will live in stress. And if you have wrong values, it will cause you to dysfunction in what you do and you will live in failure. Let's just go by it quickly. Unclear values. You're not sure what to do. In one situation you did this and in a similar situation you decided another thing. Why? Because your values are not clear. Your ethics are not clear. You saw that profile of that girl. Mm, I don't want that. Why? Oh, I don't think she's a strong believer. Oh really? Good. And then you saw another profile. <laughs> I like that. Hey, but she's not at all a believer. It's okay. I feel God guiding you. Listen, the problem is you don't have convictions. The truth is her face was not photogenic. You didn't like the photo. That's the truth. So when you don't have clear convictions, when you have unclear values, you will live a life of switching between decisions, living in confusion. One day, one decision. Another day, another decision. You're confused about life. When you have false values, it causes deception. What are false values? False values are values which are really not values. They're probably valueless. But when you give them value, you begin to live a life of deception. You're deceiving yourself and you feel cheated. Conflicting values, it causes tension. This is where some people live in total perennial tension. Why? Because in office, they have another set of values. In church, another set of values. Have you heard things like, come out of the church, I'll tell you. Have you heard that? And these are the group. Conflicting values. One value system in the church, another value system in the house. One value system in public, another value system in private. Conflicting values. And that is so dangerous because you live in such tension. In the office, you have such a different value system. People are scared of you. In the church, your value system is so nice. People just love you. People get attracted to you like honeybees to a honeycomb. <laughs> but in the office, people are scared of even passing by your room. <laughs> and such people get into trouble when somebody from church joined their office. And then they are... <laughs> Total tension. You don't want to live in tension and conflicting values. <laughs> okay. Wrong values cause us to live in dysfunction. And it causes failure. Wrong values. You take things that are, that are negative by the Bible and make it a value system. And then suddenly you're not getting your expectations. And you think, oh, why am I having a life of failure? Why am I having dysfunctional life? Because you're adopting values that are wrong. Families that are dysfunctional. Parenthoods that are dysfunctional. Because your values were not scriptural. And it's so important to go by the Bible. Get your values from the Bible. Because everything else is changing in the world. It's transient in the world. Hmm. It, 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 this is funny, but I have to tell you. In India, if you look at the cultural paintings, you will find, uh, you will find a woman in the palaces, etc., wearing very short clothes, you know, uh, wearing very short skirts, 
with very uh, minimal blouse. That was the style. Then slowly it became longer, 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 so long. You talk about full-blown uh, saris and full-blown blouse and all that. Then slowly again it becomes short. See, the world is a... That's why if you read Ecclesiastics, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. When Michael Jackson sang, I'm bad, I'm bad, I know. Paul had already said that in Romans chapter 7. <laughs> Apostle Paul in, <laughs> in Romans chapter 7 said, Man, somebody got to sue him for plagiarism. Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7 said, I'm bad, I'm bad. He said that. But the beauty of the Bible is, he said, but there is somebody else living in me that causes me to triumph. Woo! So, what God wants us to understand is get out of bad habits by value systems from the scripture. You know, the founding fathers of our country, especially under the leadership of honorable late Dr. Ambedkar, as they were forming the constitution, went through such struggle. Indian constitution is the most detailed and the largest in the world because of conflicting cultural values. Let me explain something to you. If you make a law in a country, it has to be democratic. It has to, it has to be something that appeases everybody. But how do you make laws in a country where values are opposites? So many families in the south uh, men are dominant, especially when you move towards northeast and other parts of the country, women are dominant. Matriarchal, patriarchal. Article, you know, no, no I don't want to get into specifics, but I'll give you an example. Is robbery wrong? I know you're taking time to think and that's, that's something, uh, something fantastic. You're thinking through the whole thing, but have you come to a conclusion? Is it a yes or a no? Yes. Okay, good. Because you're not from Hubli. Hubli, the second largest city of Karnataka. Bangalore is the largest. Mysore or Hubli is the second largest. A few kilometers from Hubli, there's a whole village whose only job is to steal. The whole village is about stealing. They go in the morning or in the night, steal and come and live. And the police even today don't know what to do. So they have sort of, sort of bound them within their region and, and given them instructions from where to steal, where not to steal. <laughs> this is funny, but this is the fact. It's a law. So from where did Delhi come from? Not from the culture of the society. Because the gods of those cultures used to steal. So people also steal. Now you think this is funny. But in Delhi there's a whole market called Chor Market. Ab Chor Market mein kaun sadhu baitha hai Chor Market mein Chor baitha hai. It was called Chor Market because people used to steal and sell it there. Culture. So when, when the constitution makers of our country had to make the constitution, there was such a challenge. And I want to tell you something. When you get your value from the word of God, boy, you're picking up a book which has built civilizations of the world and those that go by it will never be put to shame. Get your values from the Bible. Oh, come on, give God a big hand clap, I tell you. Amen. The scriptural values are so important. Because we live in a, in, a, in a country and in a society with so many conflicting value systems. And this is no offense for those of you who are from parts of UP and uh, parts of Himachal Pradesh. But, but the fact is that there are these millions of people there, communities, where all the men of the family together will marry one woman. Anybody from that community, don't get offended. I used to have a friend in our church from that community. He's gone back. When he got saved, he was confused. 
Because in their community, you know, four or five, six men together, usually brothers or cousins, together marry one girl. And the children born of her are common family property. And then comes the Indian constitution that one man should marry one woman. From where did they get it? From the Holy Bible. You look at any human right value based dictum, it comes from the Bible. It comes from the word of God. You want to clap for this one? Absolutely. This book has built communities and nations. It can sure build each one of our lives. Let's build habits from the word of God. Values from the word. Oh, come on. Give God a big thanks. Build. Build values from God's word. This is important. How many of you know swimming? You know swimming? You're a swimmer? Okay, thank you. Please put your hands down. I saw a lot of hands going up on the outside, overflow. Fantastic. Another question is question part two of the first question. How many of you learned it by correspondence course? <laughs> See, you just can't learn swimming until you hit the water. You have to get wet. Habits are like that. You cannot form habits until you, the rubber meets the road. It has to be practiced. That's why the Bible in Hebrews chapter 5 uses the word whose senses are trained, not just taught. Teaching is a classroom experience. Training is a lifestyle experience. Bible says we have to teach our senses to be trained in practicing God's word. I believe this year is the year of jubilee. It's the year of celebration. And we're going to change our habits under the power of God and walk in success in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I feel fire in my bones this morning. So many of us are graduating from the school of failure into the university of godly success by simply changing habits according to God's word. Hmm. You don't learn football by reading a manual because these are practical things. Mark chapter 7, somebody asked Jesus, Lord, what makes us defile? Wearing that cloth? What defiles me? Talking to that friend, what defiles me? Jesus said, what you do externally is not what defiles you. Well, they have an influence on you. But what comes from the inside, your habits, is what defiles you. Read Mark, Mark chapter 7 verse 20. And Jesus said, that which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man. For from within out of the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from habits within. Not circumstances without, but habits within. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 19. They promise them liberty. This is the new age movement. This is the new evangelists that come out of Hollywood and Bollywood and now even out of the parliament. They promote them with liberty when they themselves are slaves of depravity and defilement. For by whatever habit anyone is made inferior or worse is overcome to that person or thing he is enslaved. God is saying, hey look, if you don't watch over your habits, you become a slave of your thinking pattern, of your behavioral pattern. Which is why we began the series with to have the mindset of Jesus last Sunday. It's so important to understand this. This is a beautiful story from the American uh, Defense Academy about an experience that happened in this uh, masjid area of Iraq called Kufa. Kufa is a, a, is a township in Iraq where there was a huge deployment of American army and uh, because of the ISIS and other problems going on. So they were there and there was a huge problem in that masjid region. There's, there's this masjid there, it's called the Great Masjid of Kufa. So the, they had a huge problem. Week after week, American soldiers were dying in civil war. The civil war uh, was again starting off every Friday it will start. Then, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it will die down. Then again, next Friday it will start. 
and pick up by Saturday, Sunday, then again it will die down by Monday, Tuesday. So this cycle was going on and, and the Iraqi police and the American uh, police or the soldiers were just not able to control the situation. So a new general was posted there. So general, the new general that came decided to take a look at what is happening and he observed something. He observed what is called a social habit of the community. All these people come for their namaz to the great mosque. They all come there, they all do their prayers, they come out, they stand and they are talking in the afternoon and then the talking gets longer, discussions get heated. By about late afternoon, slowly people are looking at the noise around and you know, they can hear all the arguments and, and slowly food sellers are coming, selling kebabs and selling chicken rolls and selling all of those kind of dishes and people are buying dishes and talking more and these hundreds become thousands. It all happens in one evening and by about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, already there is civil war. Why? Somebody would have thrown a, thrown a stone or somebody would have slapped some mullah or somebody serious and then all hell breaks loose. They go around burning up the places and destroying public property and any soldier they see they want to kill them, whether it's Iraqi or American. It's terrible. Now the general observed this for two weeks. And after a week or two, he realized one thing. There is a habit. Habit is they come for prayer. They get into discussions after prayer. Then it gets into argument. Then food sellers are coming. They are selling food. They are eating and then fighting. So, he got an idea. And guess what? He didn't ask for more platoons of soldiers. He didn't ask for more equipments for a battle. You know what he did? He called the mayor of Kufa and made a suggestion. Would you please... Do me one favor, next Friday, when the namaz happens, ensure that your policemen will catch every food seller and take them out of town. There should be no kebab sold, no shawarma sold, no chicken roll sold, no Arabic food sold. He said, okay. The mayor said, all right. So next Friday, true story. This is the records of the American defense. Next Friday, all come for namaz, they finish, they come out, they are talking, get argument, get heated. General is watching. People are watching. And then they look for food. No food. Then they search for food. No food. They go out of the town for food. When they go out, the habit is broken of fighting. They don't come back. By 8 o'clock from that Friday, there was never fight again in that Kufa town of Iraq. By simply breaking one habit. Hmm. It's called keystone habit. There's one habit in your life you can change which will affect everything else. That's what social scientists call it. The keystone habit. For some people it is that one movie. For some people they get into watching pornography because that laptop and that broadband is there. Boss, just move it to the center table of the family. Your pornography addiction is gone today. It's your privacy that provides its success. You can do one small change in your life which will affect every other area of your life. The kebab vendors and the shawarma vendors were gone. Kufa in Iraq didn't have any more problems after that. Are you learning something today? There are small changes you can make in your habit. I can't get that girl out of my mind. No problem. Get yourself out of the neighborhood. Solves the problem. Solves many problems. <laughs> See, nobody wants to say Amen. But the point is this. That's a habit that can be broken. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. And Jesus, the Bible says, He went into Nazareth where he was brought up. And on Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read. Excuse me brothers and sisters, we can develop godly customs. Our Jesus, our Lord had habits he developed. You and I can develop godly habits that give us lifelong dividends. We can. Going to church, depending on God, learning God's word, participating in church culture and activities was a custom, was a habit the Lord Jesus developed. And we all want to be like Jesus, don't we? That's a very encouraging, <laughs> deafening response. Bill Wilson, it's a famous story. 
who died in 1971 was delivered from alcoholism. He was an alcoholic addict. So he got into what is called AA, Alcoholic Anonymous. He started this movement. He spent time with God. And he got this 12 simple steps to deliverance from alcohol addiction. Eight out of those 12, I think, or when I was reading it last week, when I was reading the 12 postulates, I think I counted seven or eight of those postulates are built on dependence on God. You know, when, when it was being promoted, Bill Wilson spent his life promoting Alcoholics Anonymous. Late night shows in, in, in uh, US and in Europe, they were laughing at Bill Wilson, saying, come on, at the end of your program, people will drink more. <laughs> By the time it became more popular, Harvard ran a paper against Alcoholic Anonymous. Many universities said it's the biggest blunder. But do you know, as of today, over 2.1 million people come out of alcohol addiction through the Alcoholics Anonymous registered program worldwide. And today, universities in the world are saying, oh yeah, it's a great program. Today, those critics are saying it's a wonderful program. What was it built on? Built on the truth that if God is on your side, there's nothing you cannot overcome. When you believe that God is on your side, you can move forward by the grace of God. Oh, come on, give God a mighty hand clap. It is possible. It is possible. That's why Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, and beg of you in the view of all of God's mercies, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, representing and presenting your completeness, your totality, as a living sacrifice, holy, which is devoted, worshipful, consecrated, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is more than your Sunday service. It's reasonable service, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be confirmed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. So God is saying, go through life transformation by changing habits by renewing your mind not just on sundays but every day of the week conscious changes and it's so easy because people in the world struggle with their willpower you have something more than willpower you have holy spirit power and god is on your side to help you People without God struggle with witchcrafts and black magics and habitual addictions. But you have someone called he that is greater in you is, is greater than he that is in the world. You are a tabernacle of God, a temple of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say thanks to him. When God is on your side, no habit can stand in the way if you are willing to change it. Amen. 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 I just couldn't read. I was a poor reader. But God help me. I, I'm a voracious reader today. I love reading. I love studying. I love remembering. I haven't perfected that art, of course. But just speaking up, doing better. I have miles to go. Very far from perfection. But, but thankfully, I'm not where I started. Moved forward quite a bit. Because when you read the Bible, all of these saints of God who, who were successful in life, like Jeremiah, he developed the habit of hoping in the Lord and saying, God, I know your mercies are new every morning. David developed the habit of praising God through it all and trusting in his principles. Daniel, as the prime minister of the greatest civilization of then world, Every day developed the habit of no matter how busy he was, he would come kneel down at the place of prayer and three times a day give thanks to God in prayer. He developed that habit. <laughs> Apostle John developed the habit of getting into the spirit on the day of worship. 
be it in Jerusalem or in Judea or Samaria or Antioch or the island of Patmos all alone. On the day of the Lord, he was in spirit because it was a habit they developed. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 and we are closing with this. I do not consider brothers that I have captured and made it my own yet but all who can read English can we read that together but one let's say that again but one listen brothers and sisters don't do too many things do one thing thanks do one thing one thing maybe some of you want to say from today I'm going to change the way I talk that one thing can be the keystone habit that will change so many other things Maybe someone will say, I'm going to change the way I think. Someone will say, I'm going to change the way I exercise. I want to change the way I eat. What is the controlling habit of your life? Knock that one first. Get over it. Put it into training and practice. It might take a few days, a few months. I don't know. It's your walk with God. But once you are sure it has become a habit, then pick up the next one. Don't just go to attack the whole Philistines. Go for Goliath first. It's a scriptural principle. So, these are important things. The Bible is saying, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press forward for the thing God has kept for me. Apostle Paul understood the law of priorities in forming habits. I want to challenge all of us. Build spiritual disciplines. Because when you get your habits in control, your future is escalated. The altitude of your future is taken high because you've taken your habits high. Don't ignore your habits. Because habits will finally determine where you end in life. This is so important. And God is telling you and me one thing. There is no end to how much I can bless you. But only your habits will determine how much you retain. And that's why we must be careful. It doesn't matter where we started, but it matters how we progress. Close your eyes and say, Lord, I'm ready to grow in my habits. I'm ready to change. I'm ready, Lord. I'm not stuck. I'm not frozen, chosen. I'm ready to move forward. Hallelujah. I'm ready to come out of my belief systems. I'm ready not to live in assumptions, but study your word. And I'm ready, oh God, on any topic. I want to understand how you would want me to react and develop that kind of a culture. It doesn't matter how people treat me. It matters how I treat myself. It doesn't matter what people think of me. It does matter how I think of myself. It doesn't matter how people behave. Yes, it does matter how I behave. I am your child. And I thank you that I am the righteousness of God. I thank you that believing you will change things within me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that you value me so much. Come on, everybody. Shall we pray for a few minutes? Wherever you are seated or standing, open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, God, I really, really, really today submit to your word. Receive your word. Acknowledge your word. And I know your word is so anointed that it gives the power to change. I'm ready to change, oh God. Hallelujah. Negative, evil, profitless habits. Habits that are more honoring of the demonic. Habits that are more honoring of what God hates. I want to change. And I want to have habits that God honors. I want to have habits that respects the values of God. And today, Lord, I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to be transformed. Wherever you're sitting, shall we all stand as we pray together and say, God, yes, we are moving forward. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Let's all pray for a few minutes. Talk to the Lord, everybody. Say, Lord, yes, I'm ready for the change. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wonderful Holy Spirit. Wonderful Holy Spirit. If God is, God is showing you some areas of your life that, that are practices, that, that are behavioral patterns you've developed, which is not giving you a good result, don't ignore it. Say, God, I'm ready to change it. Show me what is the root cause. I'm ready to change the root cause. Hallelujah. 
unless you confront reality you cannot change into the future hosa kama shakala rabari anta masitini anta go ahead pray for some time everybody let the lord deal with our hearts this morning we are vessels of the holy spirit you are not an ordinary person you are a child of the living god god has eternal plans with you hallelujah you are not like people without jesus you are not like a normal person you look normal but you are special you have a humble spirit but your value is very high you are willing to serve as a servant but you are seated with christ in the heavenlies thank you lord thank you father heavenly father help us today that we will develop habits week after week month after month habits that honor you habits of excellence habits of skill habits of success habits of humility habits that are profitable habits of serving the society and the church where you've planted us habits that will proclaim jesus the lordship jesus the kingship jesus and his kingdom in and through our lives we love you father we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name we pray let's give god a big hand clap say thank you jesus i've seen the lightning flashing and heard the thunder roll i felt sense break dashing trying to conquer my I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. Thank you, Lord, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. The world's fierce way. Blowing temptation sharp and deep, I feel a peace in knowing my Savior stands with me. He stands to shield me from danger when earthly friends are gone. Thank you, Lord. Never believe me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. No. Lord my Jesus thank you for you he promised never to leave me never to leave me alone when in afflictions well I am treading the road of care my say helps me to carry my cross when heavy to bear my feet entangled with briars ready to cast me down my savior whispers
but his promise, no, never to leave me alone, no, never alone. to leave me alone let's sing this one together he died for me on the mountain for me the pure for me open that fountain the crimson cleansing time for me he waited in glory upon his throne he promised never to leave me never to leave me alone no never alone no hallelujah thank you Jesus he deliverance for your to leave me alone No, never alone No, never alone He promised never to leave me Never to leave me alone Heavenly Father, this beautiful day we want to say thank you again and again for the beauty of your word thank you for the power of transformation in your scripture thank you that our lives don't have to be the way it was thank you that in your presence there is power to change there is power to improve that your holy spirit is our ever present help especially in times of trouble especially when we have to make pivotal decisions that matter in life that you are there as our counselor as our guide as our strength and we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus I speak your healing upon your people I speak your blessing upon your people I speak your deliverance upon your people father some that have got into trouble because of poor habits in the name of Jesus today I pray you will deliver them even as they are making decisions of change let them come out of their tragedies let them come out of their defeats let them come out of their problems I speak your victory in the name of Jesus I speak your healing in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah every kind of bondage just be broken in the name of Jesus right now let there be deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit anointing flood your people open heavens and broken chains in the mighty name of Jesus Heavenly Father, let your anointing fill every heart. Let your holy anointing fill every life. Let your glory touch every life. Even right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, let the changes happen by your power. In every family, in every individual, in every youngster. I pray there will be the transformation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you, Lord, all the glory and honor. We love you today. We praise you today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the people said, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding presence of the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Love you. God bless you. Have a blessed week ahead.
This program is made possible by your faithful financial support. Join us along with the thousands hearing God's word. If you are in Bangalore, please join us at Bethel AG Church International Worship Center, number 67 Ring Road, Hebal, Bangalore 24. Or visit us online at www.bethelag.in. Thank you for watching.